One of the things that I like the most about EDIUS is that it is very flexible. Some of the uh, video editing programs that I have worked with in the past have been very restrictive in the way that it allowed you to perform the various tasks of editing video. But much to their credit, the programmers of EDIUS have designed the program in such a way that you can set up an editing environment that emulates the working style of other video editing software. If you are brand new to video editing, this won't affect you because you have yet to define your own personal preference or style. But for those of you who have worked with other video editing programs and you are either checking out the program or you are having to make the switch to EDIUS because your company has just purchased a room full of Grass Valley equipment, it's nice to know that uh, you will be able to set up EDIUS to emulate the program that you are used to working with. And during the course of uh, these uh, video tutorials, we will demonstrate how EDIUS can be set up to work like Avid Software as well as Adobe Premiere Pro, as uh, those are the two other programs that I'm most familiar with, but uh, with the extensive settings that you can change to personalize the workspace in EDIUS, I'm confident that uh, no matter what program you come from, that you will be able to set up an environment that uh, you will be very comfortable with. Now, the one downside to this great flexibility is that uh, it uh, makes it a little difficult for us to do training long distance, like what we're attempting to do here at EDIUSTips.com, because if your settings are not like my settings, then the things that I show you on my computer in these tutorials may not work the same on your computer. So what I would like to do in this tutorial is spend some time with the user settings of EDIUS and uh, show you how and where you can make changes to personalize the program to suit your needs. And also so that at least as we start out, have you set your settings to match mine so that uh, we can be on the same page, so to speak, as we get started on our tutorial sessions. As you become more familiar with EDIUS and the various ways that you can edit video, you will no doubt uh, develop your own personal style of editing uh, that you are happy with, more comfortable with. But if we could at least start out with the same settings, I think that these tutorials will go a lot smoother. Now, the place where we make all of these changes uh, to the settings, the background settings of EDIUS, is up here in the uh, menu section under Settings. And uh, you'll see we have a whole list of things that we can change and optimize for personal use. Let's uh, go through them. Now, we won't uh, take the time to define or, or go through each individual setting, but let's take at least a, a quick look at uh, some of the most crucial settings. Let's uh, start with System Settings. And uh, let's open up uh, the application folder and take a look at uh, some of these options here. The first one is uh, playback. And uh, Edius would like to know if you would like it to actually stop the timeline cursor when you're playing video on the timeline when it experiences a frame drop. I usually like to have this unchecked. For capturing video from a uh, tape or a deck, EDIUS uh, asks you to go through and define what you would like it to do as it captures the tape. I like to have uh, these boxes checked, confirm real uh, name setting, and uh, we'll spend a whole tutorial on how to capture media from a deck or, or camera, so we'll go through the reasons for these uh, in a little bit more detail later. I like to have confirm file name at uh, capture, and I like to set it before capture rather than after capture. And we can go down to automatic detection of capture events. I like to have all of these checked. And down here, my option is to divide files. And the reason I have it set up this way is I like to be able to capture a whole tape at once. I set the tape uh, rolling, and um, an hour later I come back and I have my whole tape captured. And uh, each time where I pause the tape when I was shooting, EDIUS will automatically divide those files. So rather than come back to just one long file, one hour long file, I may have a hundred uh, different uh, clips already broken up and divided uh, in my bin. For render options, I usually like to have all of those checked. 
Here's where you can set up uh, as many profiles as you like. Let's say you have uh, other people working at your EDIUS workstation. They may want to go uh, and uh, change a number of these settings to match their own personal style. And so the next time that you sit down, and unless you have defined a profile for yourself that you can uh, start the program with, then you will end up with somebody else's personalized settings rather than the ones that you have defined for yourself. Now, by default, EDIUS chooses one profile, and uh, it seems as though it's picking it up from the uh, Windows user. So depending on who logged in to Windows, that will be the default profile that you are presented with the first time that you run EDIUS. You can change this through Modify or make a new profile to suit your own personal needs. In our next screen, you might recognize these as being our preset lists. We noticed this in our first tutorial. We went in and deleted all of these and started afresh. Well, at any given point in time, should you decide that you want to change your preset or add new presets, uh, customize any given preset, uh, here's where you can do that. We'll take a closer look at uh, hardware in another tutorial. Let's not worry about that now. And uh, also with the importer exporter, we'll take a closer look at that. Perhaps for now, we'll just take a look at uh, still image. When uh, you have EDIUS capture a frame from your timeline that uh, you may want to uh, get a still shot from, if you're not happy with the still frame that you get, you might want to check this out and uh, try playing with some of these settings. I sometimes find that... Uh, especially with interlaced video, if we just go with the default setting here that EDIUS gives us uh, of capturing the whole frame, that we can have interlaced issues. So if you're not happy with the quality of the still image that you're getting, you might want to try just changing it to one, either the upper or the lower field. Another change that you might want to make is to go to uh, save it as a TIFF file, and you might get better results with that. Okay, anything else here? Probably the rest uh, can wait for another tutorial. Okay, for now, let's just go ahead and hit OK, and uh, now go back up to settings, and this time we're going to take a look at user settings. Okay, under timeline, um, the first three I like to have checked, and uh, maybe as we're learning version 6, we'll leave this show tool tip during the trim, see what that's about. Uh, under snap event, uh, I like to have most of these checked. Now over here in the uh, right hand column here under default, this is uh, perhaps one of the most crucial settings in EDIUS uh, where I would like you to have your settings set like mine so that when you open up a new project that EDIUS by default will open up with the sync mode unchecked or sync mode off, the ripple mode off, and uh, that we are in the overwrite mode. This will be most familiar uh, for people coming from Adobe software. So especially if you are used to working with Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, you'll want to have these unchecked and be in the overwrite mode. And uh, as far as the uh, waveform, we prefer to have uh, it in the log rather than the linear. It gives us a much better representation of the audio track. When you ran EDIUS the very first time, you were probably presented with a dialog box that allowed you to set up a default folder and hard drive for your EDIUS projects. If at any given time you want to change that, here is where you can do that. Let's say you've, your hard drive is filling up and you want to change to another hard drive for your EDIUS projects, you can go ahead and change the default drive and folder. By hitting the browse, you can open up and navigate through your computer system and find a hard drive that has lots of space on it for your projects. Here under other, um, I like to show the recently used uh, clips that we have checked out in our preview window and uh, I usually like to have more than the five. It allows you to go up to ten, as many as ten, and uh, now under preview let's uh, check out playback. I like to have uh, EDIUS continue to play the timeline while I'm making changes. Oftentimes when I'm refining my edit, uh, fine-tuning the program, I like to be able to have the timeline continue to play while I make small adjustments. That uh, saves time when we fine-tuning our program uh, and polishing it. So let's have that checked. Continue to play back even when you're trimming a clip. That's uh, I like to have that checked as well. Okay, full screen preview. Now, if you did not purchase a hardware card uh, with your package of EDIUS, you might want to check out 
how you can have EDIUS display your program to maybe a second computer monitor. And uh, by doing a monitor check, uh, it will show you uh, what EDIUS understands to be uh, monitor one and monitor two. We're only recording monitor one for these tutorials, so uh, all we showed there was one. Uh, and then it shows you what's happening on uh, monitor one and two. There's no full screen presentation on one, and number two is auto. Uh, then over here under view, you can uh, go to full screen preview and uh, select your second monitor, and uh, now your timeline playout will be full screen on your second monitor, uh, even though we're not showing that in our tutorial. I'm looking over at my second monitor, and sure enough, it's full screen there. And uh, this will allow you, uh, if you, especially if your computer monitor is calibrated correctly, allow you to do a rudimentary color correction and give you a better idea of what your video is going to look like uh, in high high definition on a full screen. I'm actually appreciating this uh, new option in version 6 because EDIUS uh, has not yet released uh, drivers for my NX card and so for the next uh, three or four months I'm, I'm gonna have to be working without my broadcast monitor for color correction and uh, for getting just kind of the feel of what it looks like full screen and so I'm appreciating the option to show it uh, full screen on my second monitor. Okay, if you're uh, running EDIUS for the first time, you uh, probably fired up the program and dropped in some media and noticed uh, that EDIUS was showing uh, source time code and uh, different information uh, right on your preview monitor and on your record monitor and even out to your broadcast monitor. And you're probably wondering, well, how can I get rid of that? And uh, it's so distracting. And uh, here's where you can actually do that. And uh, just uncheck this. And... Uh, and when you uncheck those two, uh, what you're left with is just a volume bar for the audio that's associated with your clip. And uh, if you find that you can work with that and that's not too distracting, it can be very helpful to see the audio levels of any given clip uh, visually demonstrated there. If you want to get rid of that as well, you can go under view and go down to on-screen display and uh, just uncheck that and it gets rid of that as well. Yeah, let's go back to settings and then let's go down to overlay and uh, what we have here is the option to show the safe area the title safe area of uh, your monitor and this can be helpful when you're setting up uh, titles and graphics on your screen to be able to have this demonstrated to make sure that you're not going outside the title safe area however I keep this unchecked as a default and uh, when I do need that I can always set that up again from the menu options here under view and go to overlay and here you can display the safe area using that option there okay let's go on to our user interface and here's where we can customize the icons or buttons that appear at the top of the timeline window as well as the bin window and uh, so let's say we want to make changes to the icon strip here there's one actually that I like to have on my timeline that uh, doesn't come by default with the EDIUS program when you start it. So uh, just as an example of how you can add a button, uh, go to a user interface button and up here from your drop down menu make sure that you have selected timeline and this will allow us to uh, add uh, buttons and other options. And the one that I like to add that's not there by default is the create a still image. And so by selecting it, you can bring it over to the current or active buttons on the timeline window by pressing this arrow key. And you'll see it shows up over here. And once you see it showing up over here, you can hit apply and you'll see that it shows up over here at the very left hand corner of your timeline window. And now uh, whenever we want to create a still image of uh, anything that's on our timeline, let's maybe just grab another clip so that we're not uh, using the same example here. Let's say we want a still image of this woman here. All we have to do now is uh, press down on our little camera icon here and EDIUS will create a still image and automatically save it to your hard drive and it shows up at the bottom of the open bin so now we have a still image captured from our timeline and using the same approach you can add or delete any of these uh, icons that appear up on your timeline window or if you want to add or subtract from the top of the bin window you can do that as well uh, by changing this to bin 
Okay, uh, let's go take a look uh, at a few more here. The keyboard shortcut, we're going to do a separate tutorial on that, so we'll leave that for now. And under the bin setting, uh, EDIUS allows you to define the various types of metadata that you would like to have displayed in your bin. I wouldn't worry about this. We can always change that from the bin itself, and we'll show you how to do that uh, in the tutorial that deals with the bin window. So let's move on. Uh, window color. If you're not happy with the way that EDIUS looks on the screen, you can personalize that as well. By using these slider bars here, you can uh, change the look and feel of uh, EDIUS. You might wake up uh, one day and uh, feel like uh, you want to work with a different color background. Well, you can make those changes and uh, hit apply, and you'll see that uh, we have uh, now changed our interface to a much cooler color. I kind of like the way EDIUS uh, comes to me right out of the box, and so I usually have it set uh, right up there at uh, the center. Okay, let's go down to Source. And uh, under Duration, uh, notice that uh, by default, uh, EDIUS uh, gives you only one second for any still image that you might bring in. And uh, what this refers to is when you bring a still image or uh, some a mat that you've created, Let's just, for example, go uh, create a mat. Shows up in our bin window. Now, if we drag and drop this down to our timeline, we'll see that by default, EDIUS uh, only gives us one second of that mat. And uh, oftentimes that's not enough, especially if your timeline is collapsed like that uh, and you want uh, much more than a second. It might even be hard to grab a hold of that if your timeline is collapsed too much. So I like to have this duration set to five seconds, uh, and that way each time a still image or a mat is placed on the timeline, uh, we get much more material to work with. And so you can just take your mouse and with your left mouse button, click down, you can scroll this up to be five seconds. And also you can choose the duration for the uh, title that you might create in Quick Titler. What, uh, how long is that gonna be when you drop it on the timeline? And uh, you can have uh, anything set here, Probably by default, EDIUS has given you one second here, too, as well. So you might want to bump that up. I have it set at nine. And uh, even though we have it as showing up as nine seconds, it's easy to trim once it's on the timeline. So set something there that's more than the one second that might be coming by default there uh, from uh, EDIUS. Okay, so we can hit OK for all of that. Okay, see if there's uh, more here. Yes, uh, let's take a quick look at project settings. Here is where you can make changes to the current project that you're working on uh, while you're still working on the project. And what you can do is go down here and use this button here, change current settings, and you'll be provided with a list of things that you can change to the particular project that you're working on. Okay, and sequence settings. Here's where you can name a sequence, call this uh, and we'll see that our sequence has uh, changed. You can also, by right-clicking on the tab itself, uh, also go to Sequence Settings and make the change there that way. Okay, and uh, it looks like we can also change our profile by using that uh, drop-down option as well. Okay, well, I think that does it for personalizing our settings. I think we've uh, taken a look at uh, all of the most important settings to change and especially had the opportunity to sync up your settings with my settings so that as we continue with these tutorials, we'll be on the same page and the things that I show you on my computer will, in theory at least, uh, work the same on your computer.